The trend of simplifying designs never stops. But is it possible to cut out the clutter from these famous package designs and still have something that looks good with a ton of personality? You will be the judge. First up, I'll be simplifying Lay's potato chips. Now the standard Lay's bag is already pretty simple, but luckily they have quite a few different flavors, like biscuits and gravy, bacon, mac and cheese, and everyone's favorite, dill pickle. For this redesign though, I'm gonna use one of their newer flavors, sweet and spicy honey, which has a much more complex design with quite a bit going on. So so let's start out our new design with a blank red bag that does have a touch more saturation. Now this Lay's logo is actually a simplified version of their old one, which I actually think looks quite good. So I'm gonna grab a copy of that online here and pop that in. But you know, I never really understood what the purpose of this yellow circle is supposed to be. I guess it's supposed to be a sun since potatoes need sun to grow, or maybe it's a balloon since half the bag is full of air. It could also be a pill casing because you know they gotta be putting something in these to make them so addictive. I don't really know, but what I think it should be is a chip because chips happen to be yellow and they're basically round too. So instead of having the logo and like 200 chips on the bag, I'm gonna make the chip part of the logo, having the ribbon wrap around it just like it did the yellow ball. This particular chip though is a little too round for his own good, so I'll stretch him out to better resemble a traditional chip shape. I'll also adjust the colors to make it feel more appetizing and less pale. And you usually do want food to have a little dimension to it so it doesn't look like a flat piece of paper. So some extra shading here and there will give us that touch of waviness that we're looking for. I'll shade the ribbon some more so it really looks like it's wrapping around the chip. Then a shadow will go right here to even better sell that effect. This nice soft shadow will separate the ribbon from the bag because we don't want them blending together. But since there's no shadow on this side, a tiny rim light will give us that needed separation. The sweet and spicy honey text can go down here in a friendly font that seems to fit Lay's brand. Now to showcase the special flavor of the chips, the old package used this bowl of honey with a wooden dipper, several extra drops of honey, an entire pepper, a slice of another pepper, and they even threw in this honey comb pattern for a good measure. Honestly, it's a bit much. And really none of it even ties in that well with the chips. So instead, why not combine the flavor elements with the chips since the chip actually contains the flavor? Let's start with some delicious looking honey drizzle. Just warping that around the top of the chip. It does need to be tamed down a tad so the drips look less random and more intentional. But that will leave us with some inaccurate shines. So I'll need to fix those by painting some shading around the bottom of these edges. I think we need some darker, more rich tones in here. And since honey does allow light to pass through it, some of these drips will get a really nice glow right along the tips. Now to me, it kind of feels like the top of the honey could use a lot more shine to it, so I'll add in a healthy amount of extra reflection that follows the contour of the honey. Just fade out some of those edges to give it a more realistic look. And last I checked, honey is see-through, so we'll need some of that chip showing up from beneath it. Of course that honey will cast a shadow onto the chip, and it's super important to vary the thickness of your shadows if you want them to look realistic. But now for the spicy part of the flavor. I'll throw in this cool fire ring right behind here, along with another burning edge on the opposite side. And these are just supposed to be visible, but not overpowering. In fact, a few sparks coming out of those will make it feel like the entire top of the chip is on fire without having to cover the whole rim in flames. And with that, our new simplified lace packaging is done. And I honestly think this format would work really nicely for their entire line of flavors. Now, if you want a product that already has some decent looking minimal packaging, let's check out Bombas, the sponsor of today's video. Now they don't just have great packaging, the socks are pretty great too. Not only are they super soft and comfy, but you don't have any annoying seam around the toe to get in your way. They've got built-in arch support, airflow venting so your feet can breathe, plus this little heel lip is fantastic. A lot of my other socks allow my shoes to rub against the back of my foot, but not these. These are actually some of the socks Bomba sent me from their performance series, and they're great especially if you're into sports or working out. Now one of the coolest parts about Bombas is every time you buy one of their socks, shirts, or underwear, they'll donate a product to people in need. So if you buy some socks to keep your feet nice and comfy, you'll be doing the same for someone else out there whose feet could use a little help too. And at this point, Bombas has already donated over a hundred million items. They have a hundred percent happiness guarantee. So if anything's wrong or they just aren't for you, just ship them back and no harm done. So there's no reason not to try them out and see what you think. You can get 20% off your first order from Bombas by using my link, bombas.com slash Brandon, and use code Brandon when you check out. Thanks again to Bombas for sponsoring this video. Now we're tackling Energizer, one of the most popular battery brands in the world. And certainly the only one whose mascot is a giant pink bunny with a marching band bass drum. Between the 3D bunny render, the slew of text, and this hypnotic swirling pattern, we've got our work cut out for us if this is going to be simplified. First off, I know I want a much simpler background, but plain white is kind of boring. So I'm thinking maybe like a half and half look. Something that matches the gray and black split tone of the actual batteries. But to be fair, I do actually kind of like these little circles though, but I'm going to use them a little more 
sparsely act as a subtle transition between the dark and light areas of my background. The lines will get thinner the further down they go, as well as more spaced out, which should give us some nice visual interest without being too distracting. Next, I'll get the standard logo on here, and I do think the tilt actually does give it some extra energy. This is the max version of their batteries, which I'll place over here in plain sight, instead of underneath the plastic like the old model, and the battery type can go in the same place as the original. Now, this realistic hairy fur ball is the exact opposite of minimal, so I'll replace him with a much simpler illustrated pink copper up here in this empty space. And instead of a drum, which never made much sense to me, what if he trailed out into a little lightning bolt? Because you know, bunnies are known for their speed, and batteries give things electricity. Now, the original packaging has a bunch of extra text, like this big number, which makes you think the batteries will last 12 years, and they will, as long as they stay on the store shelf unopened. Oh, and did you also know that these batteries last up to 50% longer than Energizer's other models, which kind of just implies their other models are bad, but whatever. I'm gonna get rid of all that marketing fluff anyways, so we can see the actual batteries. Now, these I think I'll simplify just by making them all black, throwing the Energizer logo on here, and then painting the top silver, so it's kind of like a mirrored version of the background. Max can go in red up at the top, so that we have all of these converging lines pointing directly at it. And with that, we've gone from a bunny bonanza to a sleek, minimal look that will probably sell less because it isn't filled with shady marketing jargon. Next up, we have Skittles. Now, I've eaten a lot of M&Ms in my day, but I've never actually had a Skittle. Despite that, I really love their fun, colorful branding, and I'm kind of interested to see what a minimal version would look like. Now, to start with, the logo isn't too complicated. It does have a few effects on it, which kind of makes me wonder what their old logos look like. Well, shoot, I actually really like this logo they had back in 2011. It's a little simpler, but it's just nice and clean. Plus, I'm a sucker for 3D logos, so I'll just throw that in here, make it a bit larger than the one on the original package, and I'm thinking red might look a little better than black since that is Skittle's main brand color. Finally, a dark red stroke around that to separate it from the background, and you can't have a logo that pops out like this without giving it a slick drop shadow for extra depth. The old package has this huge rainbow and tons of candies flying around everywhere, but maybe it'd be better to incorporate them with the logo. So why don't we have the rainbow coming out of the eye in Skittles? I'm using Photoshop's vector tools to make these nice and straight. And frankly, when you're dealing with this amount of shapes, it's good to have something you can go back to and easily edit if you need to. It basically is just a geyser spewing out of the letters. And I guess that geyser is spitting out rainbows in Skittles, which would be falling down all around from the peak of the burst. Each one will have a different color and rotation, and the little S logo can be warped to fit them to match their direction. Of course, we've got to have a drop shadow for those two. Now, the original design has the word original up in bold at the top, which seems a little unnecessary. It's kind of like riding unflavored on a bottle of water. And I'm not exactly sure why the green Skittle is getting so much special treatment. It just seems a little unfair to the other colors to me. As you might have guessed, I'm just going to leave all that stuff out and settle for placing the legal text down here in this empty space and call it done. Like I said, I really love the original package. And while my design isn't better per se, I don't think it's half bad for a minimal approach to such a vibrant candy. Now we have Tic Tacs, the tiny mints that have been purging the world of bad breath since 1969. Now this design kind of feels like when your class took a field trip to the bowling alley and they turned on all the black lights and got the disco ball just spinning like crazy. It's a, it's just a lot. So let's just take a step back and start with a fresh green canvas upon which to sculpt our new design on. Let me get just the white letters from the original Tic Tac logo. You know, I'm not really even sure what the leaf around here is even for, but I don't think we need it. Maybe we could have a little bar down here at the bottom to put the flavor text on, and I think it would be kind of cool to have it match the rounded corners of the label, just so it flows better. Then we can stick the fresh mints text inside of that and make it a vibrant green to pop out. Since I did get rid of that extra leaf in the logo, I'll have plenty of space to put my own mint leaf. If we look at the old ones for just a second, they're actually pretty odd. Not only are they highly detailed, they just don't seem to match the style of the gradient logo or the rounded dots or the strange mist here in the background. Plus, they're the exact same color as the background, so they just blend in way too much. I found this simple leaf shape, which I think is much nicer, and that can be placed coming out of the flavor box. Just need to scooch the logo up real quick so it's not hidden. Now, let's get a stem on this bad boy, along with some tiny veins popping out of the middle, and I do think a hint of extra lighting would make it feel more alive, aided by a subtle rim light for extra pizzazz. Oh, and of course, a tiny shadow just because. I'll admit, I do think these spiraling dots over here are kind of groovy, so I'll add some dots of my own to the leaf just for a bit of texture and visual interest. Now, unfortunately, there's not really enough room on the label to squeeze in the legal text, so I might just have it printed on the plastic case instead. Would that be more expensive to print? Probably, but wouldn't you pay an extra 10 cents for mints that don't have a cluttered design? Of course you would. And normally I wouldn't do this, but I'm just really not a fan of the Tic Tac logo, so I'll replace it with one that's a bit more friendly and pleasing to the eye. Well, personally, I think this one was a huge improvement. You gotta remember these packs are really small, so I think this kind of minimal design would work really 
really well for this type of product. And then we have Red Bull. Yet another food item I have never tried. This can is interesting though, because it looks simple, but busy at the same time. I think it's just because it has a bunch of simple shapes, but they're everywhere, especially the blue and silver checkered pattern. But by far the strangest thing to me about Red Bull is that there are two bulls, but it's called Red Bull, not Red Bulls. So to fix this affront to humanity, this new simplified version will have a single bull, which I've made this little sketch of. Of course, he'll be entirely red, just like the originals, but because he's bigger, I've added in some finer details like the eye ridges, some big floppy ears, and even a few hairs sticking up here or there. Now, unlike the originals, I'm gonna use some extra shading to better show off his form. This will be especially useful around the face so we can see those nostrils, have a clear break between the back of his head and the horn, and get an overall structure of the ear. The idea is that we're kind of looking at him from behind and he's turning his head around to see us. Lastly, some final shading on the back for volume. But even though red is essential to Red Bull, I'd say their blue color is equally iconic. So to incorporate that over here, I'm thinking instead of dark red shadows, what if we made them blue? It's kind of a cool style. Plus we can come in here and give him a little energy bolt for his eye, since this is an energy drink after all. The logo can rest up top here, but I will break it up into two parts so I can stack it, which just lets me make it much bigger than normal. Finally, the energy drink text can go down here at the bottom, along with the liquid amount. Well, I think this redesign feels a lot more focused than the original, but still looks cool without stretching your attention across a ton of different elements. If you want to watch me do the opposite of this video by making famous app icons much more complex and complicated, then you'll love this video right here.